from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Wow Report. I'm co-founder of World of Wonder, Fenton Bailey, joined by our Chief Creative Officer, Tom Campbell. Hello, Fenton. Hello. You're looking very golden in this magical hour that we're recording. And also editor of the Wow Report, Jimmy St. Jimmy. Yay. <laughs> James St. Jimmy. Now, before we get started, just to remind you, the clocks fall back Sunday. So don't forget to set your clocks back one hour extra of sleep. Yay. Oh. Number 10. Number 10. I just started to watch. I think James did too. Fenton, you may have the first episode of the second season of White Lotus. And of course. for the first few minutes, you know, the first one was supposed to be a self-contained limited series. It did so well. I loved it. I think you guys loved it too. And for the first minute and a half, three minutes of the show of this new season, I thought, without giving any spoilers, I thought, oh, this is just a redo. This feels like the same thing. And then Mike White's magic kicks in and I am hook line and sinker invested in this cast invest in this season. I think it's all about cheating. And I think I mentioned last week that I think everyone should cheat, which is going to be my new podcast. But uh, James, you just watched it. What did you think? I could not disagree with you more. I really thought it was a resounding Good. I, you know, the first season was so spectacular and it did such an amazing job of showing the oblivious 1% just being culture vultures and destroying everything that they touch. And this season, it felt like, like, like the first season was so beautifully thought out. And I thought that this season was like, okay, we need a second season. You have, to, you have 10 days, do it, go. And I, the cast doesn't seem as good to me. I, I mean, Michael Imperioli is gorgeous. I love him. I think Theo James is gorgeous. I love him. And there's the new guy, Adam, Adam DeMarco, DeMarco, who is so cute. He plays Albie. He's adorable. And, of course, um, who is McCall? What's her name? Jennifer Coolidge is fabulous. Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza. Aubrey Plaza is fantastic. Yeah. But it just doesn't. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I will wait. And it seems without also who is um, Murray Bartlett. I, I don't know if he's coming back on or whatever, but it just, Fenton, what did you think? I he's, absolutely he's dead, James. loved it. Yeah, I was floating in the water. And first things first, I want to go and stay at the White Lotus. I think Mike White should open a series of resorts <laughs> yeah. called White Lotus because yeah. you know us bitches will be lining up for luxury travel and complaining about it endlessly. So, you know, it's a reality proposition if ever there was one. I mean, not I as, always not... think of you, Fenton, especially with the first episode and this episode too, the opening in the wallpaper. The, oh, I just think you the, it is just so oh, Fenton oh, Bailey. Oh, it, exactly the wallpaper and as a i love the way jennifer coolidge is is in a relationship but things have changed somewhat since the first season not going to give anything away so realistic it, though so realistic exactly exactly and very instantly bleak and as before every see every scene no matter how tranquil seeming or luxurious is just packed with tension and vibes James. I thought Adam DeMarco would have you in because you always yeah, need to I, do. I love is, him so much. He's he really so handsome. Cute. Yes, he's in a he's really big, very like, handsome kid. Non-threatening way. And I also the key to this show is like just give me all the drama you want and give me all the social lessons with people with great bodies and bathing suits sitting by a pool. I can't yes. be more engrossed. It, it, Jennifer Coolidge sex scene really just was so that was so I, I just I feel like I have been that character before. <laughs> <laughs> who um, is the who plays the guy who sold his tech company to his sort of frenemy school friend? Is that giving too much away? Yeah. It, 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 Aubrey Plaza's husband, you mean, or or the yes. other ones. I, I don't know his very, name, but he's beautiful. I got to learn the cast name. They're yeah, all he, really he's, interesting. He's, he's very cute. Yeah. And Theo James is so gorgeous and so handsome, but for some reason he just doesn't do it to me. I don't know what it, he's, he leaves me a little cold. I think, I think the character is supposed to leave you a little cold. You're getting, you're getting picky in your old age, James. Very picky. 
Um, two things. One is, and people are talking about this, but there is full frontal nudity from behind. <laughs> Right, but it's a, but it's a it's a it's a dummy schlong. It's not a real. Sh it's it's a I know, but I'll take what I can get. Like I said, I don't know where James got all these all this class all of a sudden. <laughs> and the second thing, in, in my incredible research, you know how researched I am each week. Um, <laughs> do you know when um, Michael uh, Imperioli's uh, uh, character uh, has a call, a fight on the phone with his ex-wife? Do you know who the voice of the ex-wife is? Who? Laura Dern. Oh, because it's a spectacular performance. I kept thinking, like, is that person in the room? Like, it would just seem like like over and beyond what they usually communicate in a telephone call. And it's because it's Laura Dern, Laura fucking Dern. <laughs> it evoked right. for me the phone conversations between Bill Murray and his wife in Lost in Translation. Those <laughs> slightly sort of tense filled with look well it, it wasn't sort of covert it was open loathing on this particular Fuck you version, don't call me i don't care about you things like that exactly there you go I, all I right i do so want to say though that it that it is it is i love spending time at the white lotus yes it, it, even even a bad episode of the white lotus is better than good t most good tv out there and i even love the ritual they arrive by boat they're greeted by everyone i and like the, the island welcome to the island <laughs> yes. places everybody plain, 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 plain. yes exactly. and the lady who runs the hotel in the lobby is hilarious too this is yes, very good i can't wait i can't wait to spend more time at the white lotus i agree i agree i'm checking in all right number nine James. Number nine. Number nine. I wa got up this morning and watched The Monsters on the Netflix. I don't know what possessed me. The new Rob Zombie movie reboot of the classic 1960s series. And it is so awful. Oh my God. I can't even begin to tell you how awful it is. It suffers strangely from the same reasons I just said that I didn't like The White Lotus. It is the cinematography is amazing. The costumes are amazing. The coloring, the lighting is fantastic. The music is fantastic. But for some reason, the casting just falls flat and nobody interacts with anyone in a way that feels funny or fresh. It seems like there's such a wealth of material there. There's such a, you know, like it's such a, with such a great sitcom and this movie is just terrible. Um, it, Goes absolutely nowhere. Um, Rob Zombie is just a hack, and his wife, who plays Lily, is just terrible. And the guy who plays Herman Munster, I it's weird because you don't know, like you know, so many kids shows, like they give winks to, to, to for the adults, you know, like SpongeBob or or whatever, like you know, like there's something there for the for the adults. And I don't think adults grew up watching the monsters anymore. I think it's like grandparents who watch the monsters It's people in old like us. And there's like some weird lines where like Herman says like, Oh, Lily thinks I'm such a big shot, but I'm no Bobby Darren. Like, you know, like who's, who's making like Bobby Darren jokes in 2022. It's, it's even before Darren. my time. I got to sell you. Um, yeah. Uh, but maybe, maybe for once we can give credit to Fred Gwynn and Yvonne DiCarlo for bringing those characters to life. They did an amazing job. You know, it, it, it go back and watch the original show. I guess is what I'm saying. There are um, um, uh, cameos by Cassandra Peterson, who is Elvira, and um, Butch Patrick and Pat Priest, who were the original Eddie and cousin Marilyn, are in it. Um, uh, but there is no Eddie because this is an origin story and there is no cousin Marilyn. I don't know the whole thing. Was, I'm sorry. I just spent two hours watching it. Question. Do you, in your knowledge, I know they've done the Adams family a bunch of times. Have they ever done a Munsters remake per se? I think maybe in the nineties, they tried to reboot the series huh. and it didn't go anywhere, but you know, those, the Adams family movies, even in the, even the new Adams family, you know, cartoon and everything. It's all so good. You go back and do Adams family. All right. That's the Munsters streaming on Netflix. All right, number eight. Number eight. My sister and her husband are in town, so they're staying. And I was like, what can I do with them? Show them a good time. You've never met your sister. Has she ever been to Los Angeles before? Mm -hmm, she has, yes. She's a little bit older than me and grew up in a generation when it was all about the Who and the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. Well, 
luck was on my side because the <sighs> Who played last night at the Hollywood Bowl. So scored some tickets, off we went. <sighs> uh, the tour is called the Who Hits Back um, at the Hollywood Bowl. It was a sold out <laughs> crowd. Um, opening for them, Mike Mike Campbell and the Dirty Knobs. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Were they a young group or, or an established group? No, they were stuck in a time warp group from the 70s with like, it was. Did they ever have a hit? Mike, Mike and the Knobs? Or they... um, I think he, I think he worked with Tom Petty, um, a guitarist. I mean, the whole thing was so sort of, mm, what is that? Um, it was that, um, Spinal tap. Thank you. No, spinal tap is the word I'm looking oh, for. It was very okay. spinal tap. Um, and the who, I mean, God bless them. Roger Daltrey, uh, still alive and in fine voice. Um, Pete Townsend, I didn't really realize he was the leader of the band, really. I, I, and Roger Daltrey is really Townsend, just the singer. Isn't he, hasn't he shown his true colors to be sort of like a weird Republican? And didn't he have some sort of kitty porn problem or something? No. Like I, I can't elaborate on that, but there was a weird moment of banter where he decided to talk about the homeless people and how that if we all took our money and gave it to them, it wouldn't help. So uh, that was a slightly weird moment, mm -hmm. segueing into some sort of song. The first thing they did, they came out and they did basically the whole of Tommy, which if you oh, nice. Liked, yeah, that, we love Tommy. Hits, hits, hits. There's one good song in it, maybe two. And a lot of, here's the thing. There's a lot of thrashing around and a lot of sort of rock posturing of like making noisy chords, but no real tune ever seems to get going. It's all sort of pomp. <laughs> Rock pomp, and I gotta tell you, I was bored out of my gourd. But <laughs> on the plus side, um, I think my sister and uh, brother-in-law loved it. Good. The, they had a they had a full orchestra, which was sort of rather overblown. But then I think that is the Who, that very overblown. And uh -huh. <laughs> and the only piece of video they played in the entire show was, and this is to your point, James, a retrospective of all the world events during the who's history so you've got vietnam you've got the world trade center and i'm watching this sort of montage of mostly tragic world history events and as they're jamming so i'm just finding the whole thing a little like off yeah i guess i know Before, some pop stars yeah. use video of disturbing things to make some kind of point but i was trying to understand what the point was of this other than the fact that the Who have been around for a really, really long time. And then it dawned on me, because my brother-in-law, who is a Trump supporter, um, loved them. And it suddenly, it suddenly became clear to me that this video, this film, it, either way, you could love it. You could love it as a, as a far right-wing nationalist sure. nut, or you could love it as a sort of Greenpeace left-wing. It, okay. it, it was very okay. careful to appeal to both to both extremes, but I found it slightly disturbing just the way it felt like sort of tragedy porn. Okay. And um, so that's my sort of feeling about the. And who. was um, my generation talking about my generation? Was that no. was that the last one? Did they do that? That could have that could have been the final final encore, but but we left to uh, escape all the other crowd oh. leaving, the crowd leaving, and and I can't remember what song they were playing. It was they do talk play. about my generation to a laxative, uh, pictures of laxatives. That's what they. <laughs> I just want to say that that what I've learned from this, what I've taken away, because I'm, I'm, is that the Who uh, makes Madonna look like a, a a less crazy and a more a more vital artist than the, the Who. The Who's out of touch, and Madonna. Yes, I, 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 exactly. I, I but I never liked you know Who are you? Remember that song Who are you? Who, who are you? Who are who you? Are you? <laughs> If we were ever going to do another like least favorite songs or worst songs of all time, that would be on it because I, I it's just such a terrible song. It's like who are, who wants to be bombarded with a song called "Who Are You"? I, I, it's like please. Stop. <laughs> and then it made a comeback because it was like the theme song to CSI. I didn't right? know. I did not know that. I don't watch yeah. like CSI. Well, that's the Who hits back. They are on tour um, for a little bit longer somewhere. But uh, who cares? Um, so do you want to be a guest of the Pit Crew in Las Vegas at RuPaul's Drag Race Live? Get a VIP table upgrade on us. 
and experience the show like no other. Limited time only. Get your tickets to the new 7 p.m. shows for a chance to be upgraded to the Pit Cruise VIP table. Mm, that sounds kind of hot. So, so you got to go to RuPaul'sDragRaceLive.com to get your tickets. Yeah, good take quick. And Silky Nutmeg Ganache just joined the cast for so oh, yes. who is on uh Canada versus the world RuPaul's Drag Race. So yes. For two weeks only, starting yesterday. So hurry. All right. Um, Blake, you got a question? I do. We're all supposed to vote on Tuesday. Make That's sure right. you get our vote. I'm asking, how many members of Congress are there? We will have the answer right after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and Blake. We're counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow. And Blake had a question for us. Yeah. Um, first of all, everyone should get out and vote this Tuesday. Um, but I wanted to ask, how many members of Congress are there? Now, do you, if you include the Senate and the Congress as Congress, the Senate is 100 senators. The vice president is the tiebreaker. If you count them or not, I don't know. And then there's something like 594. So 101 plus 594, six, uh, 695. Oh, thank you. James, you got a guess? 694. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> No, there's only 535. So the Congress is made up of the Senate and the House of Representatives, and there's 435 elected members of the House of Representatives and 100 of the Senate, two for each state. Now you know. Fascinating. Thank you. I can't believe I didn't know that. I feel very ashamed of myself. <laughs> <laughs> we are cutting down the top 10 things that made us go, wow, we've reached number seven. Number seven. Um, this is a follow-up story. I know Fenton shared his adventures with Harry Styles last week, but I decided after, I'm going to tell you more later, but I've been seeing a lot of really old acts. And uh, in my Facebook, uh, Lindsay Parker, who's a wonderful journalist, she works at Yahoo now in music. She's a friend of ours. She said, I have one ticket to Harry Styles on Halloween. Who wants it? You know, to buy it. And so I bought it. it you can't have a bad seat at the forum. I got there kind of late, like at nine o'clock, because I wanted to, I just want to see Harry. And because I'm, and you know, Fenton, it is so many young girls, so many young girls, and they're all singing and screaming. There's so much noise. It's really exciting. But I had to go to the bathroom because I'm an old man before I went to sit in my seat. So I did that. And then I, and, and Harry hasn't come on yet. And then I hear blasting through and people screaming and they play a little bit of from uh, Liv, John Travolta, Living John, you better break up. Ooh, 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 cause I need a man. And they go crazy. And I'm like, what am I missing? And I get in my seat and it's Halloween or as they called it at the forum, Harry Ween. And so everyone's <laughs> in costume. Harry um, pops up to the floor. He is grease lightning. He has a leather jacket on. His hair is slicked back. He eventually rips off that leather jacket to show his beautiful tattoos. He's got the studded black, you know, collarless shirt. He looks adorable. His drummer, who does a lot of the singing, she's dressed like Sandy. She's got the big hair and the black thing, and she's playing drums and singing. There's other members of the band are, are like Gene, the nerd, you know, with thing. They have a uh, pink ladies. Some were guys, some were girls. They had uh, uh, um, uh, just everybody from from, from and, and beauty school dropout with the with the silver curls. It was amazing all night long. It's I, like they knew you were coming, Tom. It's like could they could they make a better Harry Styles <laughs> concert for you? God is gay and she loves me is all I'm saying because, <laughs> because this is the final thing. And I can go on and on about the concert because I have not been that excited at a concert or, nor seen as much excitement since I saw George Michaels uh, in the faith tour in 1988. Just <laughs> the, the amount, the performer is in love with the audience. The audience is in love with the performer and the electricity and the sexual energy is undeniable. Um, but the thing that made that really proved to me that there's a God and I'm the luckiest man on earth is so his last song before he leaves the stage without any hoopla. It, I just I, I know what it is and I'm, I taped it and it's 
uh, he sang Hopelessly Devoted to You oh. by Lyndon <laughs> John. And when he came to the chorus, but now there's no every voice in the forum, every little 14 year old girl <laughs> was at the top of her lung singing it. And as he faded out the song and it was a train to an end on this huge screen, because his screens are spectacular. It's like, the, it's like the documentary has already been shot in those screens and uh, so many cameras, so many shots. And they put a picture of Olivia when she's in the car waving goodbye in Greece. They showed her in, in, in uh, you know, summer loving and it ended up with a more recent picture of Olivia. And I am filming it. I am singing hopelessly devoted to you and I'm crying. So I can do all of those things at the Tom, same time. I don't believe any of this happened. I think you had some weird fever dream and it was like Dorothy going to Oz or something like that. Because I don't believe this happened. This is something that only you could make up. I, I may be in the ICU right now and your guys are visiting me and this didn't ever happen because <laughs> it was a dream come true. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So it was, you had no idea that no this idea. was happening. No idea. Nope. And and the whole show, he sang his other hits, right? He did his All regular other hits. Always right. dressed as the Grease people. It was just because it was, it was Harry Ween. And everybody had um had a, a Styles High School. You know, they they really <laughs> done it well. It was really fun. And I didn't know this too, but I guess when he's about there 15 nights or something, he's he's got a, they have House yep. of Harry. Uh, it's like a residency, Harry's house. Yeah. Yes, Harry's house. Thank you. And then there's pictures. I just, because I, I had to walk all the way around the place because I parked in a funny spot. But they really take over and they, they had stenciled things on the wall. It was really an experience. It's such a great idea for an artist of his stature who can, you know, sustain for 15 nights. But I, I had the time of my life. And I will just add that the number one rule of forum is wherever you park, you somehow have to walk around the entire stadium when you get inside to find your That's seat. exactly That's what the, happened. Thank you. So it's a mutable law of nature or something. Um, yeah. Or, I if I didn't I, I liked him before I love him now I will do anything for Harry Styles if he asks me I will I'll murder for him I'll do whatever he wants me to do and you can go see him Harry is at the forum in LA through November fifteenth before he moves on to Mexico <sighs> James right. let's go to Mexico let's go to Mexico together <laughs> number six number six. Turner Classic Movies, TCM, was doing a lot of horror films this week. They Last night, I had DVR'd a bunch of them. I watched a whole mess of them. Uh, I watched Plan 9 from Outer Space, which I had never seen before. Ed Wood's 1950... What is it? 1957? Um, it's supposedly the worst movie ever made, and yet... It's not. It is absolutely so charming and so funny. And what they make for up for it. I mean, it's obviously it's a budget of ten dollars. It is. You can see it's just. But Ed Wood gives it everything he's got. And there's the plot is there are aliens and they come to Earth and they're raising the dead to build an army to take over the world. I don't even know what was going on. I didn't even care. I was just I was sucked in. Um, the, the the aliens for all the flying saucers are it's an actual pie tin that's spinning around on wires you can see the wires it's so bad it stars they say it stars bella lugosi but bella lugosi filmed one scene and then he died in real life so they play that first scene in the very beginning and then there's no like mention of it for the rest of the movie. Um, Vampira is in it, who was like an early Elvira, and she's one of the zombies who sort of wanders around looking fabulous with her big boobs. And there's um, it's just it's just so much fun. I just I loved it so much. The two other movies that I watched that I've talked about on the show before, I know one was called Two on a Guillotine. And it's Connie Stevens, ah! who was a 60s sex pot. And, she, and Dean Jones, who was a Disney star. And she has to spend the night in a creepy, spooky old mansion for one week. And then she gets to inherit it. And there's all sorts of skeletons and spooky sounds and blah, blah, blah. And the other one is called The Bat. And that's Agnes Moorhead. And she has to sleep in a spooky mansion. And there's a crazy killer in the spooky mansion who's killing off all the, the visitors. And But this is the 1960s, and that plot is already so cliche and hoary and old, you know, and creaky. But they're both the bat, two on a guillotine, and plan nine from outer space, and I was in hog's heaven. <laughs> I had Turner Classic movies on all week, sometimes with the sound off, but like there's nothing better than a bad, scary movie. Yes. From the 60s. 
Somehow yeah. the acting ages better. I don't know. I buy every bit of it, you know, and it's in the campy, campy way. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've no, I've talked on the show about before about how Sven Gulli is my Saturday night savior. Now Sven Gulli is on me TV channel 20 here in Los Angeles. And he's like a, an Elvira character. He's a oh. ghoul who comes out of his coffin and introduces really horrible, horrible movies, you know, horrible <laughs> old horror shows. And I, it's just, it, I am with you, Tom, that nothing makes me happier than it. In a bad horror movie from the I 50s. saw the daughter of Dracula for the first time last night and was was thoroughly Oh, I've seen that one. That's so good, isn't it? <laughs> it is there's good. a great lesbian scene. Like, like there's a like she goes to attack a woman in this really weird lesbian vibes. Yeah, it's from the 30s. Yeah, that's a good one. I just don't know what to say. I mean, you can get plan nine, you can stream it for free on Pluto to be Amazon Prime. And I guess you can probably find most of these movies somewhere yeah. yeah right google it google it it's people do the, work. do the work number five number five my sister is staying and i'm looking for things to do and take her and ah, i was like hey, the godfather 50th anniversary 1972 movie so i thought you know she'd love this um and they're playing it at the um the dolby you know where they have the academy awards is it still called yes. the dolby Yes. Yeah, the Dolby Theatre. And um, with a 61-piece live orchestra. So I thought this is like, this is like... Wait, what is, it? what is the movie? What is it? The movie is The Godfather. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Heard of it. <laughs> no, you had it. I, the... I, 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 I must have missed you saying that. <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola, right? Coppola. Do you say Coppola or Coppola? Coppola. 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 You don't say either. It's not Coppola. It's not Coppola. What you say, Capola? Is that something British? No, it's Crapola and it's Coppola. Are you having a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I took my sister to see The Godfather with a live orchestra. This is not about that because I, I, I thought this would be like a cultural thing, but a little, a little bit classy. So I, I felt good about it. But something's happened during the pandemic in terms of people arriving on time, for example or then moving into their seats quietly, or then how about not talking all the way through the film while the orchestra's playing? It was suddenly, I couldn't focus on the film at all. Well, the first thing that happened is there were subtitles on the screen. And this was upsetting to everybody in the near vicinity who felt they had to talk about it. Like, this is subtitles, it's ridiculous. The subtitles on The Godfather. Then there's more people coming in and they're late and everyone's having to get up. And then, you know that old thing in the theater when someone gets out like candy and unwraps it and it's so noisy. That's my sister. My sister is the worst. My sister will bring like a salad and sit and like eat pretzel sticks. And I'm like, what are you doing? I swear to you, it was as if the audience had never eaten food before and they brought all their food at once to the theater. And then there was, I mean, and, and suddenly once you start noticing this stuff, you cannot notice anything else. It's like ASMR and it's closing in on you. And then the man behind me has a drink with ice in it and he takes <laughs> his straw and he is twisting the straw and he like, like, <laughs> and I am, I am reaching some kind of boiling point. And finally, um, uh, uh, the person next to me takes out their camera and starts taking pictures of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I think this is supposed to be a, a not just at the movies, at the movies with a live orchestra. It's supposed to be classy oh, oh and then reference this is a classic you're supposed two to two rows face. back a woman starts coughing that covid unmistakable <laughs> covid hack and i look at nolan and i look at billy and we're all like we're all feeling the same thing of just completely freaked out and we're like we can't stand it anymore we had to leave we, had, we got you up left? after like 20 minutes yeah was your sister yeah. there yeah we dragged her out too we made her leave you're, now I, I, I don't know what this is any coincidence but jimmy kimmel whose office is just across the street uh, they just announced today that he's doing a prank show so i'm just wondering if you were in a jimmy kimmel it felt prank like show we were in a prank show. i really mm. wanted to scream it was well, okay it was, wait for a couple of thoughts here first of all has no one ever seen the godfather before no oh okay well <laughs> It, it's weird because I'm not a Godfather fan. I I don't I don't quite get all of the hoopla around it. I I know it's a heresy to say, but I 
I, I would be interested to hear what Nolan thinks if you sit him down and make him watch it. Well, the little we saw of it, we actually did like, especially Marlon Brando's like uh, this sort of gesture the that he has down. The, well, yes, the jowls, but also the way he would scratch, he'd, he'd do this. It wasn't just like scratching my face. He would like, with the back of his nails, like as if lost in thought, you know, it was a very effective trope, I suppose. Wasn't that, was the drag queens why. call that nailology or something? Na nailography? Could do, but like I say, we hardly saw any of the film and all I can really report to you is about the drinks and the food and the people getting and leaving and the people coughing and the people talking. It was it was unbelievable, unbelievable, unwatchable yeah. because of it. I can't believe you left after 20 minutes of that film. But when you went to see Little Shop of Horrors, a woman actually vomited on you and you sat through it. <laughs> That's right. The woman in front projectile vomited. Well, we weren't spattered with vomit ourselves. So oh, it was just okay. in the vicinity. It's funny. There's a really fabulous um, family uh, um, American dad episode where Stan gets addicted to crack and he's sitting at the dinner table and everybody's eating very loudly and he needs to go do crack. And that's sort of what I'm thinking. And like every little sound is driving him crazy. And that's sort of what I'm thinking it was like with you, with like every you hear the ice cubes and you're like, ah! That was exactly it. But let's. Yeah. this is a good moment, perhaps, to take a snack break or a drink break. <laughs> uh, Blake, do you have a question? I do have a question. Um, now, I want to remind everyone to go vote. It's Tuesday. Thank you, And Blake. this question is really for our Kansan listeners, because I'm in Arkansas. Who must be beat in the race for governor of Arkansas this Tuesday? Oh, God. All right. All right. That's uh, <laughs> we'll be right back after the break with the answer. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. All right. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and Blake with a teasing yes. rock the vote question. Yes, rock the vote. Go vote on Tuesday. Now I'm in Arkansas right now for a funeral slash wedding. So who a must funeral be wedding. Yeah, well, always my favorite. When the corpse, it's a corpse bride. <laughs> yeah. Who must be beat in the race for governor of Arkansas? Now I know well, James. I'm, knows. Yeah, I'm. But I'm just gonna say, is there a, is there a chance in heaven that, that they aren't going to make it, or is it a shoe in? I feel like it's a shoe in. Oh, Tell us God, who. I don't know. Who is it? Who's gonna win? Who needs to Sarah win? Sarah Huckabee. Sarah. She's gonna win. Yep, she's gonna win. There's no. Uh. There's, uh, but everyone go vote for Chris Jones. Chris Jones. Okay. Yes. All right. We are counting down the top 10 things that made us go, wow, we've reached number four. Tom. Number four. I mentioned earlier that I went to see Harry Styles. And part of the reason I went was just to, to age, age down my concert, uh, my concert going. Because I saw two different artists this week, both of whom I loved. One was I saw Belinda Carlisle in Beverly Hills at the oh. Savant Theater. Oh. And the, the main reason I went, because I love her and I've seen the Go-Go's not too long ago at the Bowl. But um, Gabe, Gabe Lopez, who does a lot of the music and orchestration for RuPaul's Drag Race songs and works with uh, Leland, uh, was opening for her. So I got to see uh, two bills. I got to see Gabe. And then I saw uh, Belinda Carlisle. Um, she looks so good good oh she has not aged a day from the balcony her and her hair is ah. perfection ah. she had so much fun and she wore no she was barefoot she wears a tight black turtleneck and sort of this like sort of gold le leopard skin very classy kind of you know hippie kind of hostess skirt i felt like it, i was at her house having a you know couscous by the pool or something and she spins and she's so flexible because she's got to be 60 61 and she like bends to the floor and raises an arm i felt like if i had followed her it would have been like taking water aerobics like by the, from the sexy lady at the senior center um she sounded really good i thought all i could think of is how you know self-admittedly in her own memoirs uh uh she it was on coke for like 30 years and i can't can't help but think her being clean and sober has helped her uh her her songs and you know, she does the go-go hits. She does her hits. And there were a few hits she had because there were some gays there that were huge Belinda Carlisle fans. And they <laughs> knew every single lyric. But it, it was fun to see the fandom. It was fun to see uh, Belinda. So then 
uh, Saturday, I convinced my friend Greg, who went with me to that, to drive with me to Cerritos, not Cerritos Auto Square, but to Cerritos Performing Center for the Arts to see one night only Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. Oh, God. Now I know you're having dream. Now I know this is all just Tom <laughs> fantasies because that I, that I can't even imagine. you. They imagine. were a, a key part of the fifth dimension. Uh, Meryl McCoo's voice, you know, from one less bell to answer last night. I couldn't get to sleep at all. Billy Davis Jr. sings the let the sunshine part, the soulful part of, let of uh, the, the sunshine. Yes. And, you know, they had, as they reminded us, they had a single after they broke up from the group, they had a single, you don't have to be a star baby, which oh. one of them, their seventh, like, like their seventh Grammy or something. And, um, they sounded Amazing. Yeah. She is 79 years old. Oh, he is so 83 beautiful. years old. And they are delivering. She is statuesque, beautiful, fit, not an ounce of anything wrong. She's kind of blonde now. He just wore all black. They had three other background singers so they could become the fifth dimension when necessary. And it was just a super gracious, a lot of old people and me in the audience, but it's it's there's something about seeing you know how I love I love it's like legacy singers people that have you've known your whole life who can still do it and they also sang a few hits I mentioned this uh, during lockdown they recorded an album after 30 years they recorded an album of Lennon McCartney hits called Blackbird and oh, yeah. and 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 in this and I don't know what the population of Cerritos is like but you know you go out to Fenton's Point there's people there and I assume a lot of Republicans come to this kind of a, event as well. And they sang, they sing Blackbird, the, the Beatles song, which has a lot of, uh, especially coming from a, a beautiful black female singer, it has a lot of connotation of, of race and, and survival. And and they they run a screenshot, a slideshow, very simple, but of Harriet Tubman, uh, you know, of Trayvon Martin. And, and they also put an article up there, and it's from a long time ago, but when they lived in some fancy white neighborhood, Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. had a, had a cross burnt on their front yard. Oh, I remember and that. it's just, just, and I know it's a small thing, but it's like, I thought it was so brave of them because they're very middle of the road. They're very want to please everyone. They're born again Christians. They're lovely. But they took that time to sort of uh, make that moment, uh, that statement about race and about inclusion and, and and I thought that was really beautiful. Um, uh, I'm insane, but I loved my Billy, my, my Billy David. Now, my, my and do you want to fly in my beautiful balloon? Yes, they sang that. They also sang, um, uh, "Will you marry me, Bill?" Bill, oh, marry me, I Bill. Love me so. oh, Which so they have good. been married. Guess how long they've been married? I've got us. It's got to be at least fifty years more. Fifty three years. Wow, wow. You know, I um I saw Belinda Carlisle at a party uh, recently, and she was. I when I tell you, I mean, I, it was up close. That skin. She has the skin of an eighteen year old. Her hair, like you said, her hair was like in a chignon. She was in like a, a Chanel caftan and a hundred thousand dollars worth of diamonds and just looked so beautiful. I mean, like literally you could not stop looking at how just what a beautiful old that's how a woman should age to me. God bless Madonna for everything, but when you got Belinda Carlisle looking like just those i mean i i literally was and she had come to world of wonder i don't know if you remember this it was about 10 years ago when the go-go's got their star on the world of fame and we gave her a tour down in the basement and she, her son is so handsome and so good looking and she was so beautiful and funny and go i just can't say enough about bubble into carla she's just she amazing. would rock out to her own music and her hair <laughs> would, 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 would fly into her face and sometimes you know when you dance i used to dance and just move my head a lot because it felt like i was dancing well sometimes she would just rock her head and i thought like she must be having so much fun underneath that incredibly smooth beautiful red hair oh all right um let's move on to number three james number three I am reading a book called The Shadow of the Empress. 
And it's about the Empress Marie Therese of the Austrian Hungarian <laughs> Empire in the oh 18th century. God. And she was so fabulous. She was very formidable. She was up there with like Elizabeth I and Catherine the Great. She was this wonderful like battle tactician, this warrior queen. And she was a great thorn in the side of Frederick the Great of Prussia. She, for 30 years, they fought back and forth and had all these wars and battles. And to read this book, you know, back in those days, the um, the royals were all intermarried, and you have to know the bloodlines of the royals of Tuscany and Parma and Poland and Romania, and it has these lists of who was married to who and who gave birth to who, and all these maps of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and all this like stuff that like I had no idea going in. I had absolutely no idea, but she was this. She was a Mama Rose type figure she had 16 children Whoa. okay 16 kids 10 of whom survived <laughs> and she married them all off to make great matches of all of her children one of the children so the first half is her and her wars and everything and the second half is her kids and one of the kids was um uh what was her name marie christine uh wait uh, Marie Christine, who became the governor general of Austria, hung hungry, which is a big role. She was like a huge mucky muck. The second one of the second daughters was Marie Carolina, and she became the queen of Naples. And that was a big, huge deal because Naples was like the South Beach of Europe in the 18th century. And it was where all the rich royals went to play. And the palace there was bigger than Versailles, more sumptuous than Versailles. And she had all these jewels and she was just really fabulous. But she was brought down when Napoleon comes to power. So that's her big story. But then the youngest child was a little girl that history remembers as Marie Antoinette. And Marie Antoinette goes off to France and is never heard of again. Nobody knows what happens to her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so it's just this fabulous, fabulous book of history that I really had no idea that this mother and her 16 kids, and she's just this fierce, fierce, fierce queen, Marie Therese of the austro hungarian Empire. I think there is a completely separate show of like old dowagers and duchesses and royals of yesteryear female from you james it's true it's true well i just love her because you know this is a period where there weren't very many women you know queens and she, empresses and whatever and she just she what like when i say that louis the 14th and you know uh, king um i can't even remember would it be king in the 1700s in, in, in england who was the King George, I guess it was King George and Louis the 14th and Frederick the great. And all these people were just terrified of her because she was so just this fierce queen. I <laughs> feel like in Versailles somewhere, there's a portrait of all of Maria Antoinette's siblings. Oh yeah. Well, that's, that's the Netflix show. Each one of her siblings, cause she had well, 10 of them survived, but she, the, she had 16 brothers and six sisters. I just remember the, and the paintings were all done very, I don't know the thing, but they, they, they all look like little angels. They look exactly the same. You know, the artist was very flattering to all of them. I love yeah, it. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but there's the picture of the three daughters right there. And they do, they all look exactly the same. That's the way it looks. That's if I, if I recall correctly, it was the first sign. Uh -huh. individual portraits on a wall. All right, we're going to move on to number two. Number two. I went to the Attitude Awards. I was very lucky to be invited as Michelle Visage's guest. She was the host of the Attitude Awards in London. Fine. And yeah, I was very excited to be on her arm. And uh, she, as you know, is the face of the new Virgin campaign, where oh, the Virgin, yeah. the, the team, team Virgin in the air can wear whichever uniform they want to wear. So it's it, it's uh, they've degendered their uniforms, so to speak. Yep. Um, and it's a great campaign, and it's directed by this brilliant guy, Samuel Duke, D O U E D O U E C K. So Sam. So I met Sam because he was on the table at the Attitude Awards, and I was wow. saying, "Oh, what do you do?" And he was saying, "No, no, no." He directed this commercial. I was saying, "That's brilliant." He said, "I also have a side hustle." And I'm so excited to reveal it. I told Tom Campbell about this earlier that I was going to do a live un uh, unboxing on the radio show. And Tom was like, well, that's a good idea for radio. <laughs> but I, but we are also on video. But anyway, I, I'm holding my hands a cardboard box because Sam has a side hustle. 
And on the box, which arrived today, it literally arrived moments before we taped, it says liberation through exploration. So I'm going to open the box, and you can hear me rustling the paper. So I can rustle, take rustle, paper. rustle. It's a brown rustle, box. Rustle. I'm going to break the seal. Oh, it's a purple and... purple uh, wrapping paper. And inside a package. is a tube. And this is water-based anal lubricant with CBD. Now, so so, <laughs> so your butthole gets high, is what you're saying? I don't quite know how it works or what happens. But I was just, because I was naively chatting and said, oh, that sounds so fascinating. What's your side hustle? And he's like, oh, lubricant with CBD. And then I was like, rushing in where fools rush in where angels fear to tread. I was like, oh, how does it work? And he said, I'll send you some. And he did. Well, are you so, going to try it tonight? I think you should try it on air. I think you should do it right now. <laughs> I think Fenton's think? butthole has gone to pot. That's what I think. What? <laughs> oh, my God. Who's the new Katie Turek? Come on, put it in. It sounds very oh, good at Paltro is what it sounds. Lube it up. <laughs> lube it, it doesn't up. have to be luby for there. It could be luby for anywhere you want lube. Well, exactly. I should read the little, there's actually it's a very revealing where you'd put glossy it. brochure that comes with it. And it says Howl. Howl. It's called Howl. The brand is called Howl, which is kind of what I you don't like want them. your lube to be called <laughs> Howl. That's that seems very anti uh, <laughs> counterintuitive. <laughs> well, well, maybe not. <laughs> Dream pain. <laughs> <laughs> So that's my surprise. That's my live unboxing. Well, will, um, you please, will you please lube, it, lube yourself up tonight and give us an update next week? Maybe, if you're very lucky. It, it takes me a few weeks to, to embrace anything. Get something new. up so. there? <laughs> <laughs> it takes a few weeks of work? That's wishful thinking, Fenton. Yeah, right? But once I get started, it's days before we can get a finger in there. <laughs> If we were oh never de canceled before this moment, we will get canceled now. This is I, really think, this is I really think we should take a break. <laughs> House of Love cocktails and mocktails are on sale now. Six marvelous flavors, no CBD, no lube, but they are absolutely delicious. Drink in moderation, honey. Yeah. And you can put them in your mouth. mouth. You put them in your mouth. Exactly. Just Tom, where do you go to order them? Oh, that's it. Houseoflovecocktails.com. That's right. Available now. Six delicious flavors. Okay, we're going to take one more break. And when we come back, the number one thing this week that made us go, wow. wow. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and Blake. We've been counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow this week, which means that we have reached number one. Number one. I wanted to say that that, that we had a, a bit of a discussion beforehand about what should be the number one thing. And there was a number of votes of people who said that we need to talk about Heidi Klum. You know, every year she does a fantastic costume for her Halloween party, your annual Halloween. And this year she outdid herself with this worm. Have you seen the images on the Internet? It is That's a insane. little creepy. It is the craziest costume I, she's ever done. It, it makes Jabba the Hutt look like, uh, I mean, it's just, it is so funny. I'm just, I am gobsmacked by what an amazing costume this is. But the other thing that we need to talk about is um, the, the, the attack on Paul Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's husband, which happened this week. And the very crazy way the right wing QAnon nuts went into overdrive over this and they started with these weird conspiracy theories that it was a gay tryst gone wrong and um in short term very quickly elon musk who has bought twitter and got i mean you, twitter has become a hellscape in a matter of 24 hours it's so insane i i had such a nice following on twitter and now it's like I nothing but nothing but nothing but hate, 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 and N words and J words and pro Trump Yuck. and this and that. Yuck. But the but the way that even Fox News, everybody has jumped on this conspiracy theory about Paul Pelosi. And it's so weird that, you know, as we head in towards the the election and the rhetoric keeps getting pumped up and pumped up and pumped up and 
I don't know. Do you guys even have thoughts about this? What, what do you think? I have a lot of thoughts about it. I think that, that it there's a sort of uh, adjacency between Elon Musk and, and Twitter and the whole Trump turd Reich and making fun of this break in. And the facts have been revealed to completely disprove this. Pre that, completely, completely. That, that, you know, is is profoundly disturbing. But evidence of the fact that I still think we are failing to correctly estimate the the danger that this threat poses to how you can say democracy but just who we are as people yeah it does feel like like the anger is disproportionate like i just don't i don't quite understand why everyone is so just rage filled and filled with so much hate it just it doesn't make sense to me and the the what Tom always says about how a lie can go around the the world before you can put your boots on or or whatever the the uh, uh, the saying is the saying is James that a lie goes around the world before Fenton can put CBD uh, lube in his butt. <laughs> That's exactly. I've been hearing that since I was five years old. <laughs> My mother used to tuck me in at night saying, "Poor Fenton can't get a finger up his butt for weeks at a time." But Trump, a lie about Paul Pelosi can go around the world a hundred times. And it's very weird though that um uh, that the lie is amplified, but then when the truth comes out. It's just a little barely whisper that doesn't go anywhere. Well, then restate the truth that he was uh, that a uh, 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 a terrorist broke into their part into their home trying to kidnap Nancy Pelosi, and in doing so encountered the husband and and, and bludgeoned him with a knife and put him into the hospital with brain injury. Hammer, and hammer. recovers those. That's the truth, and it's horrible. Yeah. So, and that it's not something to joke about on Twitter, like. Donald Trump Jr. has, for example, oh, that, that whole you know. the underwear and the hammer and I just, mm -hmm. what, what went wrong? I mean, well, we know what went wrong with those kids, but I mean, just I, I do think maybe in years to come, someone will do some kind of study that will draw the link between the demise of local news, the advance of social media and all this, because it does feel like this sort of this. I think we all feel this rising rage and anger and polarization without really having a clue how to diffuse it. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm seeing concerts in Cerritos, I'm trying to bring the world well, together. And that's why I'm going to have a little fun time with this um, <laughs> howl. With my and CD. I'm just I'm just reading more books about 18th century <laughs> courtesans and duchesses. Because and... they were all very happy then, James, and loved each other. <laughs> and Blake's going to your funeral wedding, which you'll have to tell us about next week in detail. Yeah, I will. Mm. I will. Well, thanks for tuning into the Wow Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. Thanks, Andy, for having us. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, James. Thank you, Blake. Same time, same place next week. Let's do it. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow. wow.